Another area with a tragic and bizarre earthquake history lies 80 kilometers further south at the foot of the Alps. A seismologist has come to Lucerne to study one of the strangest geological events ever known. Historians have uncovered the handwritten diary of a city official, Renward Sizat, who described an extraordinary event. On Tuesday, the 18th of September, 1601, a strong and frightening earthquake hit the area around Lucerne. The diarist recorded how the water drained from the lake floor. It was a terrifying sight. Yet young people ran across the riverbed on foot. At the time, Lucerne was a small walled town. South of the bridge, the ground was marshy, so the houses were built on stilts. The diary says a giant wave then rolled in. The waves came again and again, six every hour, back and forth, as if in a bathtub. And it went on for three days. Lake Lucerne today seems peaceful enough, but the secret of its violent past is still locked in. The lake gives us like the, the, the instrument of ancient times that can record these earthquakes because otherwise it's tricky to find the traces of old earthquakes. Inspired by the centuries-old writings, seismologists have gone underwater to discover exactly what happened here 400 years ago. Sediments have been building up for the past 15,000 years ever since the lake was formed during the last ice age. Wooden piers mark a submerged settlement 5,000 years old. Further into the settlement, the ground splits apart. A giant underwater cliff shows where tons of earth has slumped forward deep into the lake. There's no way to make such a cliff with those structures just from slow movement. I think there had to be kind of like an event that created that cliff. So I think it's a fairly good sign that, that, that uh, indeed this, this, this was a, a, a catastrophic event that moved down that slope. The horrified townspeople took the violent shaking and pounding waves as a sign of God's anger. But on the very first day it ended, Sizat, the city official, took on the job of documenting exactly what had happened. He describes how boats were tossed three gunshot lengths inland. Some ended up in trees. Unmanned ships were torn off the piers. Dead fish piled up on the banks. His final observation provided a crucial clue to the cause of the giant waves. He observed that underwater mountains and hills were broken apart and sucked down into the depths of the lake. His precise observations give the 21st century seismology team remarkable insight into what happened in 1601 and why. The investigators have found evidence that the violent shaking dislodged millions of cubic meters of mud. This happened 13 times in different parts of the lake. When the mud slumped forward, it produced mountainous waves two kilometers long, tsunamis. This is the wave that goes here across the lake that arrives here at the coast with a wave amplitude of maybe 3 to, to 4 meters or 10 to 13 feet. The lake floor contains another kind of evidence. 
Test cores are extracted from the layers of sediment. They drop a metal probe from a fixed gantry 300 meters to the lake floor. So the whole purpose of it, to get them as undisturbed as possible, just a vertical core section of mud. Modern day seismic techniques directed by the astute observations of a clerk over 400 years ago gradually reveal the secrets of Lake Lucerne and its ancient earthquake history. Back on the lake, researchers winch the probe to the surface after a few minutes. The 11-meter plug will tell the story of Lake Lucerne over the past 15,000 years. Okay, so here we have this 10-meter-long this sediment core that we took vertically out of the, the subsurface of the lake. And basically, the deeper we go, the, the older the time will be. It's like a time journey back into, into our past. The colored bands show periods of calm where sediment settled. If you look further down, suddenly this, this nice layering, this, this quiet sedimentation, suddenly here gets interrupted. And, 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 and this, in fact, uh, we're really sure, is the result of these water movements, of these tsunami waves at the bottom of the lake. And so basically all of this, almost two meter of sediment here, actually really are related to this 1601 earthquake. And then we see further, further down, down the core, a period of stability. Then another quake, in about 470 BC. And I would guess it's age, and this is very similar to the 1601 earthquakes. So we can get somehow an idea on, on how often these earthquakes occur in here in this area. Over the entire core span, there's a constant recurrence of large earthquakes, sometimes hundreds of years apart, sometimes thousands. Compelling evidence that it was no freak event the tsunami could happen again. In summer, the Lake Lucerne area has a population of half a million. If a 6.9 quake triggered a tsunami today, the impact would be enormous. The first sign would be the receding waters. Mountains of water would shift into giant waves, propelled by the tons of mud crashing to the lake floor. Gigantic waves would speed towards the town, with Lucerne's postcard bridges and buildings directly in the firing line. As in 1601, the tsunami would resonate, roaring up and down the lake time and time again. But the big question is, will that happen? And if so, when? So ironically, the fact that they occur less frequent makes it even more difficult to, to predict and more difficult.